Artificial intelligence is transforming the healthcare landscape by processing large amounts of data, recognising patterns and making intelligent predictions. To tell us more, we're joined now by the Deputy Director of UNSW Sydney's Data Science Centre and the founding CEO of Omni Omnics, Fatima Vafay. Fatima, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now, AI as we know it is rapidly reshaping a range of sectors. What's the main impact it's having on healthcare? Thank you for invitation. Uh, artificial intelligence, as you mentioned, is coming into scene in, in, in every sector. Healthcare by itself is re revolutionizing by huge amount of data from different resources. You can think of sensors and, and wearable devices to medical images to molecular data with reduced cost of, for instance, sequencing, being able to capture the whole genomics as well as other levels of molecules from individual patients. So we are getting into a, a realm that we are generating a huge amount of data from multiple different resources. And this is where artificial intelligence can come on board to make sense of these big data, or I, what I would call it ultra big data with heterogeneous um, resources and help us to make predictions, help us to personalize treatment, help us to basically make the uh, decision making accurate and, uh, and sensitive to different um, patient populations. What are the risks when it comes to using AI in, in our own healthcare, in medicine? So there are multiple risks involved from being um, um, an equitable and responsible systems that is not biased towards particular uh, patient populations to privacy and, um, and preservation of the patient's data that can be handled. Areas that we intensively work on is to make AI less biased towards the type of data, as well as the model that has been developed so that it can be generalized to different population and to different ethnicities, as well as explainability. So we don't want that complex AI systems to be a black box which just output um, some decisions. We want that decisions to be interpreted and being explained to both practitioners and patients that what is the source of diagnosis? What are the contributing factor to that diagnosis? What has been sort of different from the particular patients as compared to, to the others that has been the source of that? And this is quite important for patients to understand the source of decisions and to practitioners to provide advice to patients for subsequent um, actions. Mm, mm. So on the front of, of the risks, as we've been discussing, are we where we need to be right now when it comes to regulation in this space? Well, um, this is quite important um, um, from the policymakers and regulation uh, perspectives to, to make sure that um, the the, there are particular rules on how data has been collected, how data has been stored, and how data has been used. And there should be some uh, more quantitative approaches as well that the, the outcomes can be tested in terms of whether the bias has been involved in models um, as, as, um, as well as whether the models can be um, sort of be transparent in terms of the, uh, the decision making. There would be sometimes some compromise between making model more transparent and explainable as well as how accurate they are. But this is, this is a balance that we should sort of work out um, to, to be able to um, come into some compromise. And I think regulation will help on this. Fatima, get out your crystal ball, if you could, please, for us and, and paint a picture of where you think we'll be in 10 years' time. Well, it can be from multiple angles, but um, I would like to focus on areas that um, I am more passionate about and has been working on that. I uh, perceive the future of medicine in five to uh, 10 years that we would be able, in a very concentrated way, collect information from, from patients, from multiple resources, in a way that can be controlled by patients in, in, in a privacy preserving way. And it can be used to, to monitor the, the health of the patients, providing personalized advice to prevent disease ultimately, and also sort of um, come up with early decision making and accurate decision making for diseases in a non-invasive, continuous way. What is specifically are you working on at the moment? 
So one of the areas that we are currently working on and have the most passion about is a simple blood test that you can use to predict cancer early on. So think about a few drops of blood that we take from patients and measure molecules, different types of molecules within this blood, and then identify some complex patterns between them that can predict cancer early on or can be used for the treatment um, um, monitoring. So this is quite important for multiple aspects. For instance, for some types of cancer, such as um, uh, brain cancer, it's quite invasive to be able to um, monitor progression because you, you need to have access to brain, which is an invasive and painful procedure. So a blood test would be quite handy to be able to do that, as well as for early diagnosis and increase the accessibility of, of a blood test being accessible to all the people from uh, in any pathology basically that you can think of is something that we'll see as future of cancer management, what we call it liquid biopsy or a simple blood test. So this is an area that we are currently working on to combine different types of molecular data obtained from blood in an intelligent way and build a predictive model that can predict cancer early on and can be used for treatment monitoring.